Okay, so what I want to touch on in this video is dissects and cicada. So in design of integrated circuit, we have exercises, and those exercises require software. The exercises have been developed with AIMSPICE for the SPICE and iVerilog for the Verilog. So if you go to um, Google and you go AIMSPICE, you can find that. This is actually developed by Tronitadal at Antonio, and then eVerilog, eCurtis Verilog, you can find information on that. But quite often, getting the right version, getting the tools installed, finding the right editor, all that stuff is a bit tricky. Now, it is possible to simplify it somewhat. So DiceX is a GitHub repository. So if you go there and you'll see the exercise files. Here, for example, you can see the uh, first exercise uh, test bench that you need. But then there's also a bunch of other files. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is how to use this to actually directly run the software on your PC. There are a couple of requirements. So the first thing that you will need is Docker. If you go to docker.com, products, Docker Hub, and then, no, oh, sorry, Docker Desktop, and then you can install Docker. And you will need that. Now, you can install Docker on Windows, Linux, it doesn't matter. Another thing you will need is Git to be able to clone the repository. So if you don't have that, then you need to install it. And then you'll also need a VNC client. So that is something, it's kind of like remote desktop, but to a Linux box. On Mac, it's already installed. On Windows, one option is Tiger VNC. It doesn't really matter that much what you use. On Linux, well, you can use X forwarding or Tiger VNC. And if you're a Linux user, then you probably don't need me to explain any of this. So how do you get started? Well, it should be as easy as this. So if we go to a terminal, Okay, can we see this? Maybe a bit small. Let me make it slightly bigger. Okay. First of all, we need to clone DiceX. And that's with the, done with the git command. Let's go into DiceX, and then we can see the files here. So in exam, exam exercise one, you will see the um, test benches needed for exercise one. Now, I also want you to notice there are three files called Cicada in these, uh, this directory. And one's for Mac, one's for Linux, and one, for, one is for Windows. So if we have a look inside this file, then this is basically a shell script, and it runs the Docker command. So this means run Docker. This means uh, actually delete... Um, delete the docker file after you've done. So basically, if you install any programs inside this Linux um, thing that will start inside docker now, then it all disappears. So it's not persistent storage. Interactive, it uses port um, 5900. So you can only run one of these docker instances on that port. And then it mounts the local directory as the home directory, which is why also we have all these set of files, for example, bash profile uh, locally in this directory. And then we have the actual image. So if we go to Docker and we go to Docker Hub or hub.docker.com, and we searched for Cicada. Oh, there it is. I didn't need to search for it, actually. And you can see that uh, Ubuntu latest, I updated, uh, just updated. 
So this is actually a fully fledged Linux installation where all these commands shown here are run after installing Linux. So for example, it will install Amspice, it will install Emacs and so on and so forth. Now, you don't need to really care about any of this because you're just using the image. So when I start here, Cicada Mac, it will download the image from Docker if it doesn't have it, and then it'll start it. And what I get now is actually inside a Linux box. So let me start a new terminal and show you why. So if I do here, you name A, then we see we're running Darwin, or which is uh, Mac OS X. So if I go to the Cicada, we can see we're actually running Linux. And here I've installed Inspice. Uh, I think I installed ng-spice, iverilog, verilog, so on, cic, and a multiple other useful softwares for electronic design automation. Which means that now I can go into uh, example or exercise one, and uh, I'm fond of using something called make files. You don't have to care about them, but it's a way to run things. What I'm looking for now is just this command that runs Inspice on this diode.seed, which is a very simple test bench in it written in Spice for running, uh, for uh, simulating a diode. Okay, now this is just terminal, right? Command line interface you can't really get any graphics here. So if I try to actually plot something, and then it doesn't work because the Linux server doesn't know where to send the windows. It doesn't have access to anything like that. But in the home directory, there is a script called VNC start. We can have a look inside there too. And that starts a local VNC server on the Linux box. So first time it'll ask for the password. So now there's, uh, if I, let's see. Yeah, so if I plot everything or show everything that's running, I think uh, in here we should see, yes, here we go, tight VNC. So it's actually running a VSC desktop. Now in Mac, you can go to Finder and go, connect to server, write in localhost 5900, connect, and it'll connect to that Linux box. And now we're actually inside Linux. So here we can start uh, programs as usual. If I go into example one, run that diode sweep again, it'll plot the result in Python afterwards, and then you can see the images. Also inside this, I've installed uh, gedit and Emacs, which is my favorite editor. Now, you should find a text editor that you like, and then you should stick to that. Maybe it's Emacs, maybe it's Vim, maybe it's Gedit, uh, maybe it's Genie. I don't really care. Just find one and then stick to it. A little tip though, find one that's available on any platform. So whether it's Windows, Mac or uh, Linux. Okay. So here you can now run the uh, examples uh, for both in Verilog and in Spice, and you can view the results. Now for Ainspice, there's no really way to uh, view them 
easily. Um, but you do get a CSV fallout. Like that. Now, how you choose to plot that, it's entirely up to you. If you want to open the CSV file in Excel, if you want to plot it with Python or Perl or MATLAB or whatever, I don't care. Just find a way that works. For the digital simulations, usually we'll write uh, VCS, uh, sorry, VCD files. So when I run a digital simulation, I can show that. Okay, so there's an example here. Uh, actually, does it have? Yes, it does have. So let me go to that uh, directory first. Okay, now it's run the simulation, and it's written that via um, VCD file, and we can open that. And here we can see this is basically a counter. Where it counts from uh, zero. Three. Or zero, yeah, and so on. Okay, so that's on Mac. Now, mm, let me get out of this thing. Okay, so that's how you do it on Mac. On Windows, it's very similar. So if I move over to Windows here, same thing. Uh, I'm in just a temporary directory here. If I clone the GitHub repository dicex, go inside there, Cicada, now I need Windows. It will update the Docker image from Docker and then start it. And now I can run VNC start. And use a VSC client like Tiger VNC to connect to the same thing. So this is actually now running in Windows. So we can do the same thing. Let's go into sim verlog here. Counter. So if I open Emacs and open that file. Uh, let's do counter.v and also open counter test bench. And let me make it bigger. run the simulation and we can open it again mm, open your tab no oh, not file system cicada sim very log counter vcd and we have a clock a reset signal there we go so we can see that the counter, when we reset it, we get zero, zero. When we start counting uh, the first uh, rising clock edge after um, reset, we count to one, two, three, and so on. And then we can also see we have an asynchronous reset here. So as soon as we get a positive edge on the reset, then the output goes to zero or the register goes to zero. And then it starts counting again. 
So that's how we run digital simulations. Okay. I think it's finished. Yeah. Quick introduction. Hopefully you'll find it useful. Maybe one more thing I should mention. Um, when you, let's see, let's exit this. Where did my mouse cursor go? Okay. Depending on the resolution you want, you can change the VNC script. So let's say that uh, maybe you noticed it was running a bit slowly. We could start it with a lower resolution here. For example, I don't know. What's a common ratio? 1280 times 1024 or something. And then we start it again. If I can spell. And now it's going to be a bit smaller, lower resolution, but then again, it's going to be faster. So that's uh, a bit up to you what you want to do there. So I would almost recommend that you do most of the work in uh, the terminal. But then you can view stuff in the um, GUI. Okay. Have fun.